Hello, everyone. I'm Sidney Eisner, Solicam's Vice President for Quality Assurance. Well, today we're going to talk about uh, the whole wizard automation that we have inside Solicam and also the improvements that we've done inside SP4. Now, before I talk about the actual whole wizard automation and all the improvements, uh, a little history about the automation is that several years ago, we were able to recognize the whole wizard features that are given to us inside SolidWorks themselves or InventorCam, and we were able to bring in all the information and create the um, operations exactly the way we wanted it automatically on the parts themselves. Now, as time goes along, we also added stuff like drag and drop, which by the way, I will show you in a few minutes also as well. Uh, but then questions came up. For example, what about parts that are not inside the SolidCam, not created inside SolidCam, holes that are imported or extruded inside SolidCam and inside InventorCam? We recognize not only the whole wizard uh, holes, but we also recognize imported holes and extruder holes. And we recognize them as if they were the whole wizard holes. We've also added something that comes in very handy when you have several different types of processes you want to use. We've also added what we call a color filter that you can use on the holes themselves. And all of this, by the way, that I'm talking to you about, I will demonstrate every single one of these aspects that we have inside the program. And of course, we can use them all in both inside the whole wizard process operation or in the drag and drop. Let's actually now take a look at the program itself and see exactly how this works. If we take a look now what we have on our screen, this particular part that we have here is an imported part. In other words, the holes that we see here are actually imported holes. And if we can take a look inside our uh, actual SOLIDWORKS tree over here, we go into the part, you can see that it is an imported part. So we have absolutely no information from SOLIDWORKS themselves about the holes, but we do recognize them. Okay, let's see how this is done. Now, like I said also in the cell, let me just go for a moment inside my process. If I were to open up my process that I have here itself, you can see I have several processes I may want to use. For counterbore, I may have a precise counterbore, all different types of processes I may want to use. So let's just, for now, just drag this to this counterbore hole over here. Now, this counterbore hole over here is all of these counterboards, these six counterbore holes. And since I have more than one process, it'll ask me which one I want to use. And I'll say, okay, I want to use this one over here. And this is how it works is on these kind of parts. Uh, now, if you notice, again, this part is a part that's imported. And as an imported part, we still recognize the counterbore, uh, the this counterbore holes. And we can do that for the rest of the holes as well. But now I'd like to go to my next part. And this is really going to get fun now. Okay, so I'm just going to go to my uh, solid cam tab. And I'm going to browse to my next part. And it's going to be the exact same part, but this one was created inside SOLIDWORKS. Know that we have all the information. But you'll also notice something else I've done here. I've added actually different colors to different holes. For example, take these counterbore holes that I have over here and on the bottom. They're both the same type of counterbore holes, but I gave them different colors because maybe I want to have these as precise holes, and I want to have these as regular counterbore holes, okay? So I have different processes for, for them as well. Now, again, if I go into my whole pro into my process itself, if I open it up, you'll also note that we also now can tag each process with a different color, no we a matching color that we have inside our part itself. By doing that, I can actually pick up automatically the process for that hole. 
Let's see exactly how this works. Okay? Now, as you go further down over here, you'll note we have filter for colors. Okay? So let's say I want to do these counter bore holes over here. So if I go to colors, I can pick the color from the model. Say I'm going to click on this color over here. You'll see now that it chose that color. So when I drag it to this hole, which is instead of all of these holes, it'll only do these three holes over here with that particular process that I want, the count the bore regular process if I want. If I want it for these three, let me change colors to this one over here. And now when I drag it, now it'll do only these three. And if I drag it now to these holes over here, you can see now I picked that hole itself over there. The process that I will get will be the precise one as is shown over here. That's really nice. I can do that easily. But we've gone a little further doing that. I'm just going to delete what I have over here. Delete all. Now, instead of picking colors every single time, we have here another option called auto color. What auto color does is that it'll automatically recognize the colors and then assign them automatically to the proper machining process that I have that has that color already. Let's take a look what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to drag it to one of these holes, let go, and let it do its magic. You see it's creating the operations for these holes on top over here. And it's also creating it then automatically for these holes over here. Different processes for different holes according to colors. Now, this works not only on individual hole types, but let me delete what I have over here. I can also drag it to the entire part itself. Now, before I'm going to do that, one thing we should note, you see that hole in the middle? That hole in the middle is a hole that I really don't want to drill, okay? So, but since we do recognize holes that are imported or just plain extruded holes like this one, I want to make sure that we don't work on that holes. So we also have in here a hole diameter filter. And I can say that I only want to work between zero and this diameter over here, I'll just pick it right off the model itself. You see that value goes into there. So now when I drag it to the part itself, it's recognizing the entire part and it's going to assign a machining process according to their colors and according to the exact machining process I need for that one. For example, now it's doing these counter bore holes over here. Those are regular counter bore holes. It's doing these counter bore holes over here, which is also counter bore holes, regular. Now it's doing the precise counter bore holes. And this will go on and on until it finishes every single hole that we have over here. Okay. And now we've completed every single hole that we have on this part. Now, I'd like to bring up one more part. And in this part, it's just a very simple part, but I want to point out a specific case, okay? For example, you have a part that the holes are plain old extruder holes. They're not whole wizard part. They're not whole wizard holes or anything like that. Or they may be just imported holes. And we want to put a tap on it, in other words, a threaded hole on that. Now, the system cannot recognize that as a threaded hole because there's no information given to us. What we can do, and I'll show you this inside my hole wizard process. First of all, I can take my holes themselves and assign them a specific color. And inside my process, 
if I open that up, you'll note that I have a process here called simple holes with tap with that colors. And inside this process, I already have the tapping information that I want to need according to the size of the holes. Okay, it'll recognize it as a simple hole, but it'll give me the tap holes that I need. Let's see exactly how this works. I'm just gonna, again, pick out that particular color. And I'm just gonna drag it to the surface. And what you're gonna see now is very simple. It's gonna put on for every single hole, which is a different size, or the three holes are different sizes, it's gonna give me a process for each one of them with the, the correct tap size, drill size, spot drill, everything is correct. Let's look, in fact, let's take a look at our toolkit. And you can see that we have a tap here for an eight millimeter hole, okay, with a pitch of 1.25. Here we have another tap, a seven millimeter hole with a one, with one millimeter pitch. And we also have here a, a, another tap, which is a six millimeter tap with a one millimeter pitch. So with the SolidCam Hole Wizard, we can do just about any single type of hole you have here, whether it be an, a native SolidWorks hole from the Hole Wizard, an extruded hole, or even an imported hole. Thank you for listening.